Congratulations, you have just found the number one over 50 health and wellness podcast on the planet. Hello and welcome to the Over 50 Health and Wellness Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin English. I'm the founder of The Silver Edge and our mission is to help you build and maintain a lean, healthy body that you love for the rest of your life. So you can show up in the second half of your life as the healthiest, strongest, most vital version of yourself. We have another episode of the Coach's Corner today, so no guest, it's just me and we'll be back next week with our normal interview format. But this week, I want to give you a quick update on what's happening over here at the Silver Edge. And then I'm going to talk to you about corgasms and cornflakes. And for those of you who aren't sure you heard me right, yes, I said corgasms. Okay, so this is going to be a fun episode and I hope you enjoy. Now, instead of me reading an ad here, I have just a quick favor to ask you. If you're a fan of this podcast, I'd love for you to do two things for me. The first is to make sure you subscribe or follow this show on whatever podcast app you listen on. And the reason for this is that the algorithms pick up on this and it's one of the main factors for them ranking podcasts. My second ask is to please take a few minutes and write a review for this podcast. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, the way you do this is you search for Over 50 Health and Wellness Podcast, scroll down past the current episodes, and right above the About section, in little tiny letters, it says Write a Review. We have tens of thousands of downloads every month. We're actually closing in on 100,000 downloads a month, but we only have a handful of reviews. So it would mean a lot to me if you would just take a few minutes and do that. And again, doing so will help improve our rankings in the podcast universe. Okay, enough of that. Let's get on with today's show. What's new at the Silver Edge? Okay, so what's new here is I would love to start a new segment in these Coach's Corner, and it would be an Ask a Coach kind of a segment. And the idea is this. I would love for you folks to email me your questions. What would you like to know? The topic could be really anything, but certainly my field of expertise is going to be in nutrition, exercise, lifestyle, mindset, all of that sort of stuff. But I'm I'm inviting you to send me your questions, and what I'll do is I'll pick one or two questions each week, read them out on air, and then give my best answer. If I don't know the answer, obviously, I'll do some research and come up with my best answer. So just shoot me an email at coach at silveredgefitness.com with your question, and let me know in that email if it's okay for me to read your full name or if you'd just like me to use your first name. But I think this would be a fun way to start these Coach's Corner episodes. And it's also a good way for me to know, what do you guys want to hear more of? So I know I'm just I'm asking a lot here. I want you to write a review. I want you to subscribe. But I also want you to send in your questions. Okay, I want to do my social media shout outs. And my social media shout outs for this week for my fitness is a guy named Colin Daring, D-A-R-I-N-G. You can find him at Instagram. His handle is at Daring101, so D-A-R-I-N-G 101. He is, let's see how to best describe this guy. Wow. He is A, he's an older cat. He's really, really fit. And he's just amazing. He's a kettlebell guy, but that sells him so short. I mean, the things he can do with a kettlebell, nothing short of amazing. Just really fun to watch. So you guys, if you're into that sort of thing, definitely. And you're obviously, if you're on Instagram, check that out. Now, for my personal shout out this week, I've got a fun one for you. So I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a, a hardcore music guy. I love hardcore specifically, kind of that subgenre of post hardcore music. Really like, and for those of you who don't, have no clue what I'm talking about, this you may perceive this as heavy metal or screaming or that sort of thing. It's not. It's, this is a beautiful art form known as hardcore or better yet, even post hardcore. 
Anyway, this guy, Anthony Benson, I don't know that he would necessarily be hardcore, but he has some of those screamo elements that I find kind of fun. And well, let's see how best to describe him. He takes just ordinary or fun topics or oftentimes they're very uplifting and motivation topics and turns them into kind of this contemporary hardcore style music. You just have really, I'm doing a horrible job of explaining this account. It's a lot of fun. If you think you might like that, you can check him out. His Instagram handle is at Anthony Vincent official. And I'll put both of those into the show notes for this episode, which will be, let's see, this is 193. Yeah, 193 episodes. So www.silveredgefitness.com slash 193 will be the show notes for this. I was today years old when I found out that corgasms are a real thing. Okay, so I was listening to Mind Pump, which is my personal favorite podcast, and this came up on one of their shows. So if you're like me and have no idea what a corgasm is, let's go to the website Medical News Today. Medical News Today says a corgasm is an orgasm that a person may achieve through exercise, particularly intense abdominal or core workouts. So basically, this is an exercise-induced orgasm. Yep. It's a real thing. And apparently this was first documented all the way back in 1953 by none other than the famous sex researcher, Alfred Kinsey. And while this is new to me, there's a professor by the name of Dr. Deborah, I think her name is Herbenick. And apparently she wrote the definitive guide in her book titled The Corgasm Workout. And she says, get this, 9% of people in the U.S. have experienced one. Now, that seems surprising to me, given that I've spent the last, I don't know, 15 years of my life obsessing over exercise, exercise science, exercise programming, all things health, exercise, nutrition related. And I've somehow missed the fact that people, apparently lots of people, are having corgasms while they work out. Now, she says that while this is more common in females, it can occur for both men and women. Both men and women can have corgasms, but apparently men will experience a sensation similar to prostate orgasms as opposed to penile orgasms. Now, again, <laughs> I guess my puritanical upbringing isn't really helping me out much here because I wasn't aware that prostate orgasms were a thing either. Okay, so the science is still out on exactly why this happens, something about pelvic floor recoil theory. The prevailing theory is that shaky, fatigued abdominal and pelvic floor muscles produce some type of inner stimulation that causes a corgasm. Now, the Medical News Today article goes on to list the best corgasm-inducing exercises. These will be things like crunches and sit-ups, squats, leg raises, etc., along with their top tips both on how to have one and how to avoid one. Similarly, Healthline helpfully suggests that your ability to corgasm may be determined by your anatomy, your emotional state, and muscle strength at the time of your workout. Oh, and they also add their own tips and tricks to either have one or avoid one. Now, if this sounds at all interesting to you, I will drop both the medical news today and the Healthline articles into the show notes. Again, that's silveredgefitness.com slash 193. You can check that out there. But those of you that are familiar with Arnold Schwarzenegger's movie, Pumping Iron, his famous quote there about orgasms, I guess Arnold was way ahead of his time and was certainly onto something. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, just Google Arnold Schwarzenegger pumping iron orgasm, and I'm sure the YouTube clip will, will come right up. So if you see me with ripped six pack abs here in the near future, I think you'll know what's up. Cornflakes and sexual desire. Okay, I want to have some fun with this. I'm guessing that most of us in our childhood, heck, maybe even today, featured Kellogg's Corn Flakes for breakfast. But let's back up and talk about the history of both the man who invented the cereal and the cereal itself and why it was invented. 
Okay, so Dr. John Harvey Kellogg was born in 1852, and actually, side note, he lived to the ripe old age of 91, so I'm getting ready to throw some shade on this guy, but apparently he was doing something right. That's a pretty long lifespan for, for a cat back in that day and age. So anyway, he was a Seventh-day Adventist, but eventually he got kicked out over some theological differences, but he was basically famous in his day kind of like our fitness influencers on social media today. And he saw himself as a health reformer. He coined the term biologic living to help people improve body, mind, and soul. Now, he founded the Battle Creek Sanitarium, which is kind of a combo of a spa, a medical center, and a resort. And here are a few of the treatments that were available at the Battle Creek Sanitarium. And this is just a short list. There is a long list of treatments that one could get at Battle Creek Sanitarium. But here's just a few of them. The first, electric light baths. So today we have red light therapies, all the rage. And this, I suppose, would have been a precursor to that. So Kellogg promoted electric light as a cure-all, and he built these big wooden boxes lined with light bulbs for his patients to lie in. And he claimed that this therapy could cure things like diabetes, insomnia, gangrene, and syphilis. Now, mind you, this wasn't red light therapy. This was just electric light bulbs that would have been available in early 1900s. Another therapy you could get would be the sinusoidal current therapy. So he built this device to apply a mild shock to his patients. And he said this was to cure lead poisoning, tuberculosis, obesity, and even fix your vision when applied directly to the eyeball. Another thing you might get at the sanitarium would be a continuous bath. And these could last for days, even weeks. And these continuous baths were purported to treat things like skin diseases, chronic diarrhea, delirium, and hysteria. Okay, next one. You ready for this? 15-quart enemas. And not just 15 quarts, but he built a special machine that could deliver up to 15 quarts of water per minute because, quote, more people need washing out than any other remedy, end quote. And you could also have a vibrating chair treatment. And this was a wooden chair that would shake up to 60 times per second to help stimulate the bowels. All right. So you kind of get an idea. He was definitely a bit out there. He had a lot of inventions. He had a lot of therapies. He had a lot of ideas. But what he's probably most famous for, obviously, are cornflakes, our breakfast cereal, right? He strongly believed in foods that would not excite passions. And he was a staunch advocate for a vegetarian diet as well as abstinence. And in fact, he is reported to have remained celibate during his 40-year marriage. So he believed that one of the major scourges of the day was masturbation, which he believed led to a host of social problems, including depravity and insanity. And so he promoted vegetarianism and invented cornflakes as a food aimed at curbing libido, especially for young people. Now, in Dr. Kellogg's view, masturbation was a scourge, particularly among youngsters. And he went on to write, and I quote, masturbation causes, quote, general disability, consumption-like symptoms, premature and defective development, sudden changes in disposition, lassitude, sleeplessness, failure of mental capacity, fickleness, untrustworthiness, love of solitude, bashfulness, unnatural boldness, mock piety, being easily frightened, confusion of ideas, aversion to girls and boys, but a decided liking of boys and girls, round shoulders, weak back and stiffness of joints, paralysis in lower extremities, unnatural gait, bad posture in bed, lack of breast development in females, capricious appetite, fondness for unnatural or hurtful or irritation articles such as salt, pepper, spices, vinegar, mustard, clay, slate pencils, plaster, and chalk, disgust at simple food, use of tobacco, unnatural paleness, acne or pimples, biting of fingernails, shifty eyes, moist, cold hands, palpitation of the heart, hysteria in females, chlorosis or green sickness, anemia, ep epileptic fits, 
bedwetting, and use of obscene words and phrases. So in his eyes, masturbation was a solitary vice, and he considered it a vile and evil and immoral practice. And it was his mission to stamp this scourge out. So to break young boys of the habit of masturbation, Kellogg suggested procedures that range from basically just ludicrous to barbaric. And these included things like tying their hands, bandaging the penis, or putting a cage over it. And if that didn't work, he recommended circumcision without anesthetic to, quote, as the brief pain attending the operation will have a salutary effect upon the mind, end quote, which he wrote in his book, Plain Facts for Old and Young. Dr. Kellogg had an even more gruesome set of treatment for girls, including the application of pure carbolic acid to the clitoris or, in more extreme cases, surgical removal. Okay, so why tell this story other than it's just a fun, wacky, weird piece of history? And I think first is this is a case over a hundred years ago of the demonization and politicization of food. And it occurs to me that this is nothing new. Kellogg was a proponent of vegetarianism for moral reasons. He felt strongly that people should avoid eating meat as it would lead to lewd desires and sexual depravity. And we still see this tendency today, not that eating meat will cause us to become sex crazed maniacs, but that eating meat is bad for our health that it's cruel to animals, or that it's bad for the environment. In other words, if you eat meat, you are a bad person. And there are moral implications. People who abstain see themselves as morally superior, and people who partake in eating are naturally bad. Secondly, this story sheds some light on exactly why we should be eating protein. Think about it. Dr. Kellogg literally invented cornflakes to curb libido. And he was absolutely correct. If we greatly reduce protein from our diets, we will in fact be less vital. Just let that sink in for a minute. Dr. Kellogg didn't invent cornflakes because he wanted a healthier breakfast alternative. In fact, just the opposite. He wanted to change the way Americans eat to make them sicker, to blunt our natural human biology. And now, a hundred years later, we have our government telling us that grains and cereals are the base of our food pyramid and that we should be eating between eight and 12 servings a day. I don't know about you, but I want to be healthy, strong, and vital in a highly processed cereal that was designed to curb your libido doesn't sound too tasty to me. So take a look at your breakfast. Are you eating primarily grains? Most of us were brought up to believe that a healthy breakfast included cereal, such as cornflakes and orange juice, but nothing could be further from the truth. Okay, that's our show for today, folks. If you've enjoyed this podcast, I want to let you know that we have other free resources over at silveredgefree.com. There you'll find our free guides with our top tips on nutrition, exercise, and healthy lifestyle to assist you in your weight loss and fitness journey. So feel free to head over there and download anything that looks useful to you. I'll put links to everything we talked about in the show notes, and you can find those over at silveredgefitness.com slash 193. As we wrap up our time together today, you can show your support for this show in two important ways. One is to tell a friend about this podcast and encourage them to give it a listen. The second is for you YouTube folks to click the like and subscribe buttons and for you podcast folks to consider giving this podcast a five-star review on whatever platform you listen to podcasts on and be sure to subscribe and follow so you don't miss any future episodes. I really appreciate you spending your time with me today and until next time, Stay strong.